Good morning. My name is Caroline Noble, and we are here today to do the uh, FTEM agency admin training go to webinar. Just for some logistics, uh, all the participants are muted. We have several organizers. And if you have questions, there is a questions tab on the GoToWebinar that you can type in, and we have um, an operator standing by to handle your questions. Um, if you have uh, coworkers that are having trouble getting in because they um, didn't register for the GoToWebinar or you're being contacted by somebody that they can't get in, the key with GoToWebinar is you have to register first. So just a heads up if you have friends who are contacting you saying, hey, I can't get in, um, please tell them they have to actually register first, and then they'll get a personalized link to enter the GoToWebinar. But it looks like we have about 25 of the 31 folks that registered, so that's really good. So my name is Caroline Noble. We have several members of the IFTDIS team on today. We have uh, Bree Schuler and Nicole Viant, and then, um, for agency fuels leads to help us out, we have Bill Growl and I believe Kate Fisher is in attendance um, as well. So if you have any uh, questions for your agency people, we have some available. And it looks like Dave Mueller is also joining for the BLM. Hopefully I'm projecting on the screen a rough agenda for today's call. Um, we're going to sort of do an overview of the FTM system because this is new and exciting, but the primary purpose of today's webinar is actually to explain to you folks uh, the FTEM agency administrator role, which you've all been designated uh, to fulfill by your agency fuels leads. So there's some things that are specific to that that we wanna go over before uh, FTEM is advertised to the broader fuels community so that we can manage account requests as they come in. So I'll do about a 15 to 20 minute overview of FTEM because it's new to many of you. There's a few people here that were part of the beta testing. Um, and then we'll go into the specifics of the FTEM agency administrator role um, and how to handle that responsibility. And we'll demonstrate uh, through an outline and then again on screen, we'll sort of review it. And just so you guys know, this is being recorded. And we will also send you a copy of this agenda electronically via email after uh, this webinar is finished. And if you have friends that weren't able to attend, please pass on to them that we've recorded and that we'll be sending an email or you, and you can forward the email to them with the instructions for how it works. So the first thing uh, I wanna do is give an overview of, of the uh, FTEM system. I'm gonna move my... I'm going to log in to IFTDIS. Uh, an important thing to know about FTEM is that it's a, uh, the development is a, a, the first application that we're incorporating into a single sign-on system so you actually access FTEM through IFTDIS, meaning that you have to have a current uh, IFTDIS account in order to get into FTEM. So for those of you that do not yet have IFTDIS accounts, you will need to create an IFTDIS account first before you can access FTEM. I'm showing on my screen the landing page for the IFTDIS application. It's iftidis.firenet.gov. And if you don't yet have an IFTDIS account, it's okay to go ahead and do that right now. Request one if you choose to, or you can also do it later. Uh, the way you do that is you go up to the upper right, click on login and then say register. For all of you, you have a, a government um, email address so you should automatically be approved into the system and you'll get an email with a code um, enabling you to create an account within the system. If you already have an IFTDIS account, when you sign into IFTDIS, as I'm doing right now, uh, as of today, um, you should see when you log into IFTDIS, in the uh, what's called the banner across the top of your screen, a icon for FTEM. It says click here to navigate to the FTEM monitoring page. Now when I click that, I've already got an account 
So it's going to go straight to FTEM. But for those of you that have IFTDIS accounts and do not yet have FTEM accounts, which is the vast majority of you, when you click on FTEM, you'll be prompted to create an FTEM account. And feel free to go ahead and do that now if you want, or it's fine if you do it later. Um, it's up to you guys, but just to, to let you know that is live. And we do have folks um, monitoring to begin uh, the account approval process. It won't be instantaneous, but we can get the wheels in motion. So when you do click on FTEM and you have an account, you'll navigate to the new FTEM application. So this is this is new and exciting. Um, this is the soft or informal release of fuel stream and effectiveness monitoring 2018 in this It's um, spatial uh, as opposed to the legacy system, which was more of an access database. And I'm going to just walk you through a quick overview of how it works. We will be having uh, specific webinars in coming weeks that go over more thoroughly how to use the new system. Um, that's not the intent of today's webinar. The intent of today's webinar is to explain your role as a F10 agency administrator. So we start getting all the appropriate people approved in the system and their roles, but I thought it important to at least give you guys an overview of the system so you have some orientation to this thing, which is, is new to many of you. So when you log into FTEM, this is the landing page that you'll access. You can see it's, it's got some links already to uh, help content, to policy guidance, um, to your agency fuels leads, because um, there's going to be questions potentially about policy that are not questions about the software in itself. And then some hints about missing data. This is a very data-centric application. Um, we're not gonna go into a whole lot of detail on it today, but there, there probably will be questions about data. And if it's not something covered in our help content, um, you may get some tips from that missing data by contacting your agency folks. So you'll notice that there's a back to IFTDIS button. There's a return to IFTDIS on the top of the screen. Again, these are linked, but these are independent applications. So you are in the in FTEM when you get here. Um, the first place you'll go is FTEM monitoring. There's two green buttons, FTEM monitoring and FTEM reports. But just to show you how the system is going to work for people performing the FTEM monitoring role, they'll click on FTEM monitoring. And the application immediately will open up uh, and, and begin to populate lists of uh, wildfires um, on the map. Just pausing to give my system time to load. So it'll open in a split screen or a full screen mode. I've got split screen shown here. And you'll notice at the top, there's a wildfire year. You can toggle. Um, the direction from your agency fuels leads will be that, that um, this is replacing, or, or the beginning it, um, of using this system will be for 2018 fires. So you'll select 2018 fires, and then in the, uh, you guys probably won't have this pick list of agencies. I have that because of my role. Um, so it should be populated with whatever agency you work for. And then in the, the map view, we'll begin to auto-populate with U.S. Forest Service fires from 2018. It'll take just a minute to load because it's loading an awful lot of data. And you'll notice that there's a layer list that automatically opens on the left that describes what's being populated in the map. So the main things that I want to point out is this populates with data is that uh, there's four tabs in the application. You'll see in the top there's wildfire treatments, monitor complete. So the basic process is the user will come in initially to this wildfire tab, and then you'll sort of be proceeding primarily left to right. So the wildfire tab will help you find um, the wildfires for your agency that have potential interactions with agents or uh, treatments for your agency. And those will be displayed. You can see it starting to populate um, in a color-coded fashion. I can open up my layers list here um, to reveal what the, the colors represent. Give it a sec. 
it's just taking a minute to load in the layer list, but you can see on my the tab on the right that everything is red right now. So what red means, and the legend should display this in just a moment, means that there's a potential interaction detected. You'll see these columns, wildfire, acres, um, control date, uh, the status, which is not yet started. There's, there's going to be three monitoring statuses. As you enter the system for the first time, everything will be in a not started. And as people begin to do monitoring, it'll go to in progress and then eventually to complete. And then the interactions column, it's automatically sorted currently by the number of potential interactions detected. And these are auto detected by the system based on their spatial data points. Um, so there's, for example, with this bunker south fire, which is 512 acres, there's 37 potential uh, treatment interactions detected. If you select a fire, you can zoom in to that actual fire and get a little more detailed information about what the system auto-detected uh, interactions are. There's a couple of things to note here. I won't get into detail about it, but um, you can see on the screen there's this aqua colored um, circle. The bunker south, you can't see that? You want to take the screen? Sure. My system's loading a little slow, so I'm going to give this screen to one of my coworkers here who's got um, her computers working a little faster so she can describe. Um, her screen will show better what I'm trying to show on screen. Stand by one sec. You get it? Nope. No? Oh, here we go. We're just switching presenters right now. You just want to do it. You can talk and all. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we'll zoom into your fire. Um, so you're on the halo. So, okay, go for more. I'm not seeing your screen yet. Mm -hmm. Are you? Okay. So Caroline was describing how when she zoomed into um, a fire, how you see, I picked a fire that um, this little icon indicated that it was a point. That means that the perimeter had not come in um, yet for this fire to the system from GeoMax. Um, so what the system does is it applies an uh, automatic buffer to that fire point based on the uh, acres of the fire. This, of the fire in this case, the fire was 14 acres. And um, and so here you see a turquoise halo that indicates that buffer. And so with that, it's showing which treatments, uh, fuel treatments that that buffer grabbed um, or detected um, that could have interacted or that that fire could have interacted with. So um, so that's the that'll kind of give you an idea of um, maybe what you need to monitor for this fire. Thanks, Bree. So if you go back um, to the wildfire tab to see that whole list of wildfires for 2018, as you as you log into the system, you can see the layer list is now populated with the color coding. So the red being checked for interactions, yellow being monitoring in progress, and green being completed. So everything is red right now, and you have this list of wildfires for your agency um, that need to be evaluated. And, and so you can zoom into your local area um, and begin to look at these fires. So that the next step after you've got a fire in the wildfire tab and you want to investigate it is, is like we just showed you select that fire. Um, and the ones with the one with the line and the dots have an actual uh, polygon associated with it. These are all coming from systems of record. Um, so some are points that have that blue halo and some are polygons. So if we select one that has a polygon, um, we'll see the actual auto-generated interactions based on uh, the treatment data that's come in. So she clicks on that fire. Um, and the, the next step in the process is you move from this wildfire tab. Once you've selected your wildfire, you move to the next tab, which is treatments. 
And the idea here with treatments is that you can begin to look at what the system auto detected. So this is saving you know you a lot of work from in the past when you had to figure this out on your own. This is the, the joy of the spatial aspect of this, but it's not perfect. So the purpose of this tab is for you to look at the the system detected interactions and verify it. It's sort of like a treatment shopping cart, and you can turn on and off individual treatments, see them display on the map, uh, see the interaction detected with the wildfire, and determine which ones are actual keepers that meet the FTEM policy for reporting and FTEM monitoring. Um, or you can delete them if they don't actually qualify, even though they were detected as an interaction. So this tab has the uh, remove treatments, and it might be due to the age of the treatment. It might be because the treatment did not actually interact, and it's a, a false detection in the case of the ones that were points, and we just had to put a buffer around it. Uh, or you can add treatments if there's treatments that are further out um, from the not so much in the polygon case, but in the point case. And you can investigate each of these treatments by clicking on them in the map, is Breeze showing? Um, you can also click on the treatment to zoom to it if you want to get a better look at the actual treatment itself. And hopefully the folks doing the actual monitoring are pretty familiar with their treatments and can easily determine whether, yes, this is one that qualifies to count as an interaction and be monitored or no, it's not. So the, the point being, the whole purpose of this second tab is to go through and vet or verify the system auto-detected treatments to make sure um, which ones you actually want to monitor and report for FDEM. Uh, one other thing to point out for this, and we'll get into detail on it, but you can get a little more information if you go into a, a full screen mode, or if you want to show at the top where it shows now in a right-hand panel a little bit more data about those individual treatments. So these are pulled, uh, this is you know, facts data for the Forest Service employees and NIFCORs or system of record data from the DOI. So if you're trying to figure out which treatments um, these are in relation to you know, your local unit, this should help you figure out and determine which treatments are which and which ones you want to keep to monitor and which ones you don't. So that's the idea with the, the second tab, the treatment list. Uh, from there, um, you actually pick the treatments you want to keep and you proceed to the third tab, which is the monitoring tab. And what's in the monitoring tab is, is the exact same set of questions that existed in the FDEM legacy system um, that you've answered before and they were populated in a database. So you select the treatment and you uh, open this tab up and it asks you the same series of questions. There's a few unique things because it's spatial. You can see in this case, um, it is auto-populated, the interaction acres. Uh, when it has enough information to do that, the system will pre-populate the interaction acres between the wildfire and the treatment. Sometimes that's the case, sometimes it's not. The red asterisk denote the required questions uh, versus optional questions, and you just proceed vertically down this screen and answer all the questions associated with monitoring the treatment that interacted. There's a couple of um, sort of enhancement features that we've got that you couldn't do in legacy. Uh, one is that you can add attachments. So that's something that you can do from either this treatment tab or from the wildfire tab if you have a photograph that you would like to upload or some sort of data that you would like to upload. upload. Um, you click on add attachments and you can uh, scroll through your, your hard drive and add an attachment and then it'll uh, be symbolized with a paper clip that there's actually been an attachment added. Um, anything else about the monitoring tab, Bri? Oh, no, I think that's at high level. Okay. So we're not actually doing monitoring as we demo this because this is now live. Um, if you are to begin entering monitoring data, that status will turn from red to yellow in the map, meaning monitoring in progress. Um, and then once you've selected all the treatments that you need to monitor and you've completed all the monitoring, um, the treatments will begin to turn green. Um, and that's the role of the complete tab. So 
before we move on, I have one, one quick thing to add with the monitor tab is that you can, one of the um, nice things about the new application as well is that you can batch monitor. So if I knew that I was going to answer um, one or more questions similarly between the treatments that are in my list that I've decided I need to monitor for the fire, I can select multiple um, treatments in my treatment list and go to the monitor tab, and now you'll see that I've got three listed here. Now I may still wanna enter uh, monitoring data on these individually, which I can by selecting one and then entering data, but I could also select all of them and click enter data if I knew that I was gonna answer these questions the same and then save. So you can do some um, batch monitoring with this as well. Thanks, Bree. So the final tab is the complete tab. And this is uh, an important one because once the system allows you to log in and log out, uh, it's not expected that you complete all your monitoring in one session. For many, you know, 10th day per fires, this is a pretty easy exercise with this new system and you can, you can get through the whole process quickly, but for a large wildfire with multiple interactions, this, this could take quite a while. So once you're actually done uh, selecting the treatments and doing the monitoring for all the treatments, any attachments you want to add, uh, there is a deliberate process of completion. And that's what this fourth tab is. You can see it also accommodates the situation for interagency fires. Each agency conducts their monitoring independently. But once you've completed all the monitoring, you, you proceed to the completement tab and actually submit this wildfire for completion. And the significance of that is that once it's completed, um, it's, well, a couple things. One, it's available in the reporting section of the application. So until a fire is completed, um, it's not available if one were to query reports and look at them. Uh, and the other thing is that it's, um, what's the other thing again? Well, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the big one. Okay. Once you, and once you complete a fire, you can go back um, in and amend it. And if you need to change things or add attachments, um, you'll need to provide a justification for that. But, but that is the big thing, is that once you complete, complete wildfire for uh, monitoring for USFS, in this case, I'm logged in as a Forest Service user, um, then I, as a Forest Service user, I would be able to access this fire and all of the FCEM monitoring that was done on this fire um, via report. So can you go back to the wildfire tab for a minute, Bree? Just a couple other things to highlight that this system allows, and um, we'll go over these one more time. I think we're going to repeat a few things that are unique to the agency admin, but you'll see there's uh, these buttons include um, an audit log, which is something unique for the agency administrators to see. So um, you can see who has been entering data on this uh, wildfire and what they've been entering. Um, you'll see now it's populated with a bunch of information in the right hand column that says username is FTEM. So FTEM is the system and the system has done all these auto detections. So these actions are attributed to FTEM, but if Bree Schuler goes in and removes a treatment or adds treatment or begins to monitor a treatment, that username column will be populated with her name. Um, and also once monitoring has been initiated on a fire, there are some tables and some other things that you'll be able to see that we can't really show now because we're not entering any data yet. But um, you can see the grayed out table summary bar there. So that's a pretty quick system overview. Um, do you want to return to the F10 page for a minute, Bree? The landing page? The landing page. I was just going to show this real quick. So the other tab here is FTEM reports. We just want to show this to you guys. Um, this is something that uh, is going to pull data only from this new system. So there's not much in here right now, but this will be available to you. And there's five different types of reports. Um, the, the individual wildfire report is the first one. And then there's some summary reports. So it's, fairly self-explanatory as you navigate through here, but um, this is a, a place where you can go. Actually, if you go to BIA, I think I pulled some this morning. Um, I don't know if that should work. 
so we could show you what the uh, wildfire report looks like. I don't know, like grill. I think I did. Is it a grill? Oh. Never mind. I, I might have done 2017. Um, but anyway, Bree will show you a generator report. And you'll get that big blue message while it generates the map. But the other aspect of this is you'll get a report that records all the um, interaction data that was manually entered um, for that fire, those questions that are the same as the legacy system. And this report is uh, downloadable as a PDF um, if you wanted to do so, or you can download the data in an Excel spreadsheet. So we just kind of wanted to give you uh, an overview of what's contained within that reporting tab. And as people use this system beginning today and moving forward, there'll be more and more data available in here for querying. The um, historic or 2017 and prior data that you've entered into the um, legacy FTEM system is not yet integrated in here. So just keep in mind that anything you pull in a report here is, is only data from today moving forward. Here you can see the map image that's eventually generated, a, a fairly simple map image for the um, individual wildfire that you're monitoring. So with that, I think I'm going to um, turn it over to Bree to go into a little bit more specifics of the FTM agency administrator role. We just wanted to give you guys an overview of the system since this is all new. Um, I might pause for just a second to see if anybody wants to type in any questions into the chat channel about that overview um, without getting too in-depth since we're going to do webinars more about how to use the system in the next couple of weeks. And also, I want to give um, any of the agency fuels leads that are on the call an opportunity to speak now if they would like to. At this point, I think it's, it's Bill Growl from BIA. I'm not sure if any others have joined. Um, so, do we have any questions coming in? So, the most recent one was a question about <clears throat> whether or not the maps in the reports tab are exportable. Yes, maps, the maps are exportable. Um, so, you should be able to, to export. Um, let me just go back to that. Um, you should be able to export the entire report, which includes the header, the map, and all the tables as a PDF. And then you can um, you can download. I just click this download button, um, the map as a, a JPEG. Um, another question we have is: Are the wildfires starting within the calendar year or the fiscal year? Um, and how far back does the treatment data go? Two questions. So calendar calendar year on the question about the the date um, and what was the other one? How far back is the treatment data? Go? Treatment data goes back. I I believe we've got. I should know this offhand, but I believe we've got data as far back as um, 2005 is where we cut it off. But I think there is some some older data in there. Um, actually, now it's coming to me. We the interaction utility does cut the the um, fuel treatment data off in terms of that auto detect um, at 2005, but there is older data in there that you can manually add. And the last next question they had is: Do attachments need to be 508 compliant? But I think I would want to ask Henry that question. I don't know. So we'll. We'll find out. We'll follow up on that. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. And Bill, did you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, Caroline, thanks. I do have one thing. Uh, this is Bill Growl from BIA. Uh, you guys went over that um, scenario where you can do batch uh, reporting for large fires that intersect with many fuels treatments. And I want to make sure um, to distinguish that case from wildfires that intersect with the polygon um, that may have had multiple activities on the same footprint of land or the same polygon. For instance, uh, you know, there might be some uh, thinning, followed by mastication or pile burning, followed by prescribed burning. 
um, in that in those cases where we're talking about multiple treatments that have occurred on the same footprint, which is the will be the same polygon in FTEM, uh, the the guidance is that um, we'll only uh, report on that most recent treatment of those of that series of treatments. We can't report on every single uh, activity that went into the same uh, footprint of land. That would be considered double dipping. So I want just to distinguish that from the case that you guys were talking about where large fires intersect with multiple separate treatments. Thanks, Bill. That's, that's really good and a great example of how um, you know, there's there's questions of policy and there's questions of button pushing, and we are the experts on the button pushing. But there are um, policies on how this is to proceed, and and this data, um, it's important to remember that that treatments list is indeed a shopping cart, and and that's where you vet it to meet your agency policy. Uh, it, it'll probably show more treatments interacting than you are eligible by policy for FBEM to actually monitor on. And it's tempting to just monitor everything that the system detected, but but thanks for pointing that out, Bill. This will be important for uh, people to remember, especially potentially agency admins looking at the work that people entering data have done, is that they don't just accept what the system has given them, but they go ahead and um, pick through that list and determine which, which ones are the appropriate ones to monitor. That's a great point, Bill, thanks. And I, I just realized um, Dave Mueller is on as well. Dave, do you wanna add anything? Yeah, I wanted to, to to include that. Of course, for BLM, we have a little bit different policy. Uh, we also allow for the um, one report, of course, uh, but um, it's the latest or the most significant treatment. The treatment that made the most significant to the to the report to the fire behavior, etc. And I and and we have to say that because. Uh, we need to make an allowance for, um, uh, you know, for especially for our seeding treatments. Um, we may not we may not report on the seeding because that has not made the significance. Uh, it's the, you know, it was the treatment uh, of maybe three treatments back, uh, like the thinning uh, that reduced the number of of uh, you know, juniper that, that took it out of the crowns of the uh, of the tree, the fire out of the crowns, and and put it onto the ground. So those might that might be the treatment that made the most significance to the fire behavior, and that would be the one you want to report on. And and that all that will come both next week or, or when we have our BLM um, when we have our BLM uh, webinar and also the, our uh, BLM specific. Uh, uh, policy that should be coming out sometime. Cool. So there are a little bit of nuance, nuances to the to the to the policies, and so each bureau should really be sure they understand their bureau's policy regarding the reporting and and the eligibility. Yeah, thanks, you guys, and that's a great reminder. Dave, that we're trying, to, we're going to switch gears now and go to the FTEM agency admin role. We'll go back to our outline, um, and we'll be having follow-up webinars. But I'm going to let Bree go through this outline specific to that role now and explain to you guys specifically um, how this works. We just wanted you to have context um, for how the system works. And we'll come back. We'll come back around to the release timelines because and the piggybacks on on these web follow-up webinars that we're going to be having for each um, agency and bureau. Um, okay, so I'm going to just kind of scroll through some things, um, hopefully not too quickly, but um, I do want to be able to demo for you guys um, the user list, which is where you, you're going to likely spend some time here um, in the next few weeks, and I'd imagine that things will pick up again in the fall um, when people are starting to to want to get their FM monitoring done. So um, first, um, just wanted to kind of give you a, a, a quick overview of, of sort of like the hierarchy of the uh, FTEM roles and privileges. So 
this spreadsheet you can also find in the help content. It's a little bit different format there, but if you need to want to look at things a little bit more um, in depth, I would I would um, encourage you to check that out. But basically, we've got five roles um, in FTEM, um, and you can see them there. We've got the FTEM viewer viewer role. We've got an agency viewer role, um, an agency editor role, an agency admin role, which is everyone on this call, and then the FTEM admin role. Um, and so, again, you can kind of just uh, have a visual of the hierarchy of these roles. Um, of course, you guys will be agency admins, um, and, and one of the primary things that you guys are going to be doing is um, approving agency editors, and, and on occasion, an agency viewer, but mostly agency editors. Um, so, role specific to what you guys are going to be doing, um, first off, in order for you all to become agency administrators, um, you have to be approved by an FTEM admin. Um, in your case, it's going to be Dave Mueller for the DOI agencies, and for the Forest Service, it's going to be Jim Minakis. Um, and so there is no way in the system for you all to request an agency administrator role. Um, Jim and Dave have identified you all as being agency administrators first specific regions within your agency. Um, so they know who they want to be an agency administrator, an f agency administrator, and they'll be going into the system upon your registration into f um, to approve you. So key part of this is you all have to get into IFTDIS and request f access for Dave and Jim to be able to grant your agency um, administrator role within the system. Um, so again, um, your your primary role as a, an FTEM agency administrator is going to be granting or denying agency editors mostly, and like I say, on few occasions, um, agency viewers, and I'll explain why um, that is. Um, and this is based on your agency and your region and the user's agency and region. Um, and when you, when I get down to requesting FTM access, I'll show you where you identify that. Um, side note is that um, once you're into the system, even though we do ask you to identify your region, and we're asking users to identify their region, once you get into the system, you're not limited by your region. Um, if you come in as a BLM editor or you approve someone as a BLM editor, they will be have access to monitoring all BLM um, treatments and fires. Um, likewise, as a BLM FTM agency administrator, you will have access to all um, BLM fires and treatments. I mean, like Caroline mentioned, you can see the audit logs. That's just a way that um, give you guys a way to look into the history of a fire if you have a question. This is kind of a, a way that we can help you vet um, what your editors are doing in the system. Um, um, so then, let's see. Oh yeah, so then the next bullet is that some, some of you are responsible for approving or denying um, agency editor and agency viewers for multiple regions within your agency. So, um, and we've already been given that list of folks and we've actually put, already entered you guys that are responsible for multiple regions within your agency um, on the back end. So that's already been taken care of for those of you who are responsible for multiple agencies. When you register for FTEM, you are not going to be able to select multiple regions for your agency. So, um, so just pick one, but know that we've taken care of that, the other agency, or the other, excuse me, the other regions that you're responsible for on the back end. And we can, we can adjust those as needed. Okay, so, but the first thing you need to do is you need to create an IFTDIS account. Um, like Caroline said, um, it's a single sign-in, so you log into IFTDIS to be able to access FTEM. Um, so to create an account, which I know a lot of you have already done in IFTDIS, but some of you have not, that's why I want to cover this, um, is you go to the iftdis.firenet.gov um, landing page, and you can click register there upon on the login uh, dropdown. Um, and then this is this is what the registration page looks like. Now, um, IFTDIS has some, and FTEM, have 
uh, some pre-approvals for users that have um, these pre-approved email dona domains. So if you have a blm.gov and fs.fed.us um, email domain, and there's a handful of others to cover, Fish and Wildlife, um, and the other core regions, or sorry, core agencies, um, you're going to get pre-approved to IFI this. So when you register and fill this out with your um, government email, you're going to get a message in your inbox that might look something like this. And again, I took a lot of these screen captures from our help content. So there's a really great um, uh, tutorial on how to register for your account there. You'll get an email with an access code. And then you go back to the IFIDIS um, landing page, and you can use that access code to enter the system. Um, so you don't you don't require any of us approving you guys. You can get in with your your government emails. Um, when you log in, you're going to get asked to accept the rules of behavior. Um, and once you do that, um, you're going to be asked to create a unique password. Um, this is all pretty pretty common for applications. So you can create your unique password. Um, and once you set your new password, you're going to get logged into the system. So that'll get you into IFIDIS. Once you're in IFIDIS, um, you're going to see FTEM on the navigation bar. Let me jump back in. Um, so here you can see this is I'm in IFIDIS and I see FTEM on the navigation bar. Um, there are a couple other places you can get to FTEM within the system. If you are on the cycle, which I'm cycle page, which I'm on now, I can also get to it from um, the monitoring portion of the cycle. And then I can get to FTEM reporting from the reporting part of the cycle. But like I say, um, FTEM is on the navigation bar. That's probably the easiest way to get to the system. Um, so you're going to click that. So you're going to get into the FTEM registration page, and you're going to register for an account. So the first thing you're going to see when you click FTEM on the navigation bar is a page similar to this. Um, it's going to auto-populate your username from IFDIS and your first and last name. So those fields you don't need to fill in. And this is where um, you're going to set your agency and your region. So this is what I talked about before. Um, so you're going to pick your agency, you're going to pick the region that you're responsible for, um, and then you're going to um, put in a justification. You do not need to check the box for edit privilege, although you can. Um, um, but either way, like I say, Dave and Jim know who they want as their agency administrators, and they're going to go in and approve you as an agency administrator manually. So you're going to set all of, all of this up, and then you're going to request FTEM access. Once you do that, um, you will get an activation code in your email. Um, a note on both of the, the auto-approved emails that you're going to get, if you don't see them in your inbox within about, I would say, five minutes, um, they may have gone to your junk folder. Um, I would say if you don't see them within probably 15 minutes, um, I would contact us. Um, and we can see what's going on. Um, but those should come relatively fast. Um, and then you're, so you're going to get your activation code for FTEM um, there. That's going to allow you to log in to the system, um, again, based on your email, your government email. So um, you're going to get pre-approved to get into the system at a minimum as a viewer for your agency. So once you get that email code, you're going to return to IFIDIS and you're going to click on the navigation, FTEM navigation bar and you're going to enter that activation code into a, a screen that's going to look similar to this. It's going to auto-populate again your username and your first and last name and then you're going to enter that, that access code and this is a one-time thing. Um, you do it once and then you're in and then you're only going to be using your, your IFIDIS login. Um, so you're going to submit that access code and then you should see um, you should get into to FTEM um, as a viewer. So um, let's see. So the viewers um, are not going to see the monitor and complete tab. Um, your screen is going to open like this, but you won't. You only see the, the wildfire and the treatment tab. Um, however, um, once you guys get in, um, you're going to be 
approved as agency administrators, and then that's, you're going to see a screen similar to mine. So um, Dave and Jim are going to be watching for you guys to get get your um, your FTEM account set up, and then we'll go in and do that. And you'll get an email um, from the, a system generated email that your privileges have been changed, and that's how you'll know that your agency or your FTEM agency administrator privilege has been granted. So, are there any questions? I'll pause there for a sec. There's Okay. Yeah. Caroline has a question. Not a question, no. <laughs> Comment. I've forwarded. We've already got requests <laughs> coming in for FTEM access, which is great. So just telling Bill, Dave, and Mike that um, I've gotten some requests. Hopefully you've got them too. If you have any questions, we can begin to approve those folks anytime now. So it's great to see people requesting access. Okay. So um, with that, so now you let's say that you you are an agency administrator. So um, you, Dave and Jim have gone in, they've approved you for that role. Um, and once they do that, you will start to see emails coming into your inbox once users have started um, requesting access to FTEM. Um, they'll look something like this. I've got a screen capture. Um, showing what they'll look like. Um, here, you know, my my agency administrator name, of course, I was using this for testing, but it's telling me, hey, you've got this user has requested edit editor access for agency USFS, which matches my, this account was an agency administrator for the Forest Service. Um, and it gives me a little bit of information about that user, who they are, what their email is, um, and then what they've grant, what, what they're requesting access um, for. So upon receiving these emails, that's when you can log in to IFTDISC and again, access FTEM from the nav navigation bar. Um, and you're gonna see now in the drop down box under your name on the navigation bar, and I've got a screen capture here and hit circled user list. You're gonna see a user list now because you're an administrator for FTEM. So you can click on that user list and it's gonna open up a page that looks like this, um, which is a list of users um, and a bunch of filters on the left-hand side. This is what I'm gonna demo. So I'll, I'll actually show you guys this live. Um, the filters can help you sort on users by many different um, things. The thing that you're gonna focus on to start um, to find that user is gonna be the agency and region, right? You're gonna I'm, in this case, I am an administrator for the Forest Service for Eastern Region, so those are the filters I set, and then I can narrow my list down um, by doing that. Once you do that, you can click on the user that you're looking to grant privileges for, and you'll see um, four different options under their name, um, and you are going to be using the grant agency roles um, button to uh, have a, a dialogue pop up that's going to give you um, sort of a, a matrix for approval of roles. So once you click that, you'll see this dialogue pop up, and it's going to show you what that that user, what their current role is. Um, so for this this specific user is Forest Service Agency. Their current role is viewer. And that was likely because the system auto approved them as a viewer because they used a Forest Service email. Um, and it doesn't show here, but if they would have clicked that request editor access upon registration, it would show that they've requested editor access. Um, and in which case I would click the editor checkbox and grant roles. <coughs> That's gonna be the primary thing you guys are gonna be doing is using this editor role checkbox um, to grant editors privilege. We have a question. Oh, yeah. There's a question about having access to agencies, so service first people. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So we have built um, the system to account for the fact that some um, some editors will require access to multiple agencies. There could be viewers, for that matter, that agency viewers that would want to see um, more than one agency. Um, and yes, we can account for that. I don't. I'm not covering that here. Um, but basically, what you would do is you would, you can select, you could select all of these. They could have access to all agencies. Um, 
but if they were, say, Forest Service and BLM, and they needed to edit, um, do their editing for both agencies, then yes, you could click, you could click BLM here as well, grant roles, and then that editor is going to have access to both agencies. Let me see if I, I can show you real quick the difference there. Um, so I'm in my FTIM administrator um, account, so I actually have access to all the agencies, but this is what, this is the extra thing that they're going to have. And hopefully my screen is loading fast enough, but um, there's a drop down box that they'll have where they would see in the case I just described, they would see BLM and Forest Service in this drop down and they can adjust what they're looking at um, with that. So, and we'll cover that more in the um, webinars coming up where we'll get more into the weeds of the system. So after you grant the, that user their editor role, um, they will get an email telling them that their privileges have been modified by you, and it's, it's instantaneous. So um, once you you change their role, if you refilter, and I always try to do this to just ensure that I gave the person the right um, privileges, um, you can use, then you can use the F10 role um, filter and make sure that the, you've got the right you know the right role assigned to the right person. Okay, and I don't have a ton of time, so I'm going to jump into the user list just real quick here um, and show you guys how to do this live. So here I'm in monitoring, but I, I can still get to my user list. Um, and I'm going to go to um, my, I'm responsible for Forest Service Eastern Region, and I'm looking for Nicole Viant's request. Um, so I've, I've used the filters to sort by my agency and region. Um, here are users that um, meet that criteria, and I see Nicole's request right here, um, and I'm going to click her name, and I'm going to grant her agency roles. So here again, I did, she didn't click the editor box, um, but if she, she would have, it would have shown up here, but I know I need to give her editor role, and so I'm going to click that box, and I'm going to grant her that role. So now, if I, I'm going to clear my filters and I'm going to go to agency editors, should be a Forest Service um, Eastern Region editor, and here she is. So um, just like that, I've, I've changed her role. And so now, if you use, just like we have in the application, utilizing this right-hand panel to give us some more information about um, treatments and fires, when we are in FDM monitoring, we also have in the user list um, some information about that user. Um, and you can see here that she's an editor for Forest Service um, and then the region that she is working working in. I think that's, that's it. So if, um, I don't know if we want to open it back up for the leads, um, if they have anything additional or if there's any questions. Can you show the, t the overview again, Bree? I want to go over the, um, the timeline one more time for everybody. Sure. Yeah. So just to um, clarify or review the timeline for everybody, um, FTEM is available for y'all to request counts. Um, today, it's like we said, a soft release. We have not advertised this. Um, we're going to send a formal announcement um, in about a week. We want to allow time for agency administrators to get set up as admins. So when we do announce it, um, as the editor requests come in, you'll all be in place to do the approval process to give you a little time to get oriented. Um, and then we have, we're going to schedule this series of webinars we're showing on screen in, in about, not next week, but the week after. They're um, agency specific, although uh, I'll let the agency lead speak, but I think if, if one time works better for another person, they're open to anyone. It's just that it has to do with those policy issues that um, they'll be reviewed more thoroughly by agency policy on those webinars, and we will record those as well. Um, so I just wanted to kind of go over those timelines for you guys, and also to let you know that as you request stuff today and in the next few days, um, there may be a time lag. It's just when, when Dave, Mike, uh, Bill, Jim have time to review these requests and approve them. So it may take, it may be today or it may be a couple days, um, depending on when they have time to go ahead and approve you. But if this seems cumbersome, just keep in mind this is a one-time deal. Um, 
once you have these roles, uh, these roles stay. Um, there is like the 60 day password thing, but your role is retained even when you reset your password. So um, if this seems cumbersome, uh, we'll get it straightened out in the next week or whenever people begin to use the system and it, it's, um, it's really not too bad and then it's set. So at that point, I wanna open it up for the agency lead and or for questions. For anybody else, we have about five minutes remaining. Are there any questions being asked? So we did have a question about um, use on in the field on a tablet. Um, we obviously you can log into the application um, if you have if you're able to get you know an internet connection, but we don't have an FTEM app um, specific for for tablet use. So it's mobile friendly. It's mobile friendly, although. Just a, a word of warning that the on especially on the list um, the list pages. Oh, let me. We have so much data displayed in these tables and with the split screen, I know that's gonna there'll be some overlap there that you'll see, but um, but it should be you know the, the page should adjust to your 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 screen size. So. so. We had another question about how could clinical treatment be uploaded to FM from this board or the BTRT? So data right now is coming in only from NISPORS and FACT right. nightly. So we are updating those all the wildfire, so Irwin, Geomac, NISPORS, and FACT data is getting updated every single night. So if you put data into NISPORS today, you'll see it in the system tomorrow. BTRT. And, and we, BTRT for for BLM BTRT populates NIF cores. There. Any other questions? Um, confirming you will send out the agenda outline that has the instructions. So yes. 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 And did we show the help content? Um, I, I think I showed it briefly, but just to, in addition to the, we can send the PDF to everyone, but uh, it's largely redundant with what's in the system help content. So if you go to um, help, there's an FTEM help section that covers account requests and roles that's pretty thorough. I know uh, Dave Mueller actually sent a PDF out to his folks, um, but the help should be. Um, but similar to what we send out, we'll do both, and um, and feel free to contact us as well if you have any issues um, in this initial account establishment. Glad to help. And we are still, you will, in help, you will see some um, uh, work in progress notes on a couple of the a couple of the sections because we are still working on on updating some, especially the technical documentation on data. Um, and some of the back end stuff. Um, but in terms of being able to get in, um, you can log into IFTDIS and access the FTEM help from IFTDIS in order to, to figure out how to set up your account if you're getting stuck. And, and just like within IFTDIS, if you're having trouble, um, if you find a bug, you can submit a ticket um, and we get notified of those right away. So, um, So if there's, is there anything else? Words of wisdom from the agency fuels leads that are in attendance? Well, this is Bill Growl. I don't know about wisdom, but I just wanted to let BIA folks know that uh, we're working on uh, some short written guidance specific to BIA that'll um, be coming out um, within the next uh, week or so, I'm hoping. I guess for BLM, for those who are on um, the state leads, uh, be sure you uh, advertise the uh, BLM specific webinar so we can get as many people on it as possible and get the, get the, the training that needs to be done for BLM um, and get using the system. And they've all sent those out today. I think other than on this agenda, we haven't distributed those dates yet, but I will do that today so you guys can get that information out to the field. 
I'll set up those go to webinar accounts. Perfect. All right, well, thanks, yeah, thank, everybody. Thank you, guys. We'll be recorded. We're at one hour. Okay, we appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this new system and contact us if you need any help. Have a good day. Thank you, guys.